Classical Greek and Roman temples are not arbitrarily designed, but heavily symbolic stone edifices inspired by both natural and utilitarian elements from earlier periods of history. They're categorized by archaeologists into a number of types, and if you can identify the type, you will start to understand some of the symbolism and significance behind the temple, as well as the influences acting upon its maker. Sometimes you can also use this information to identify the period in which it was built. This guide serves as a starting point, acquainting you with some of the most important terms and ideas. The earliest identifiable form of the stone column emerged more than 4,700 years ago in the Egyptian Old Kingdom. Imhotep, the semi-mythical vizier of the pharaoh Djoser, who built the Steppe Pyramid of Saqqara, is credited with their invention. But they were a stone version of an earlier architectural element. The Egyptian temple was originally an impermanent structure, not too different from a house. In fact, it would have literally served as a house for the Ka, or life force of the gods. Early evidence for cult centers are found at sites such as Buto, the city of the Cobra, and in other pre-dynastic and early dynastic period sites. For example, the reconstruction depicted here is a wood and reed temple from Hieronkompolis. In these early temples, pillars and posts would have been made from bundles of reeds or other natural materials. These would go on to shape the various styles of columns in Egyptian architecture, as the early houses of the gods were emulated in a new medium, stone. Columns could be carved to look like bundles of reeds, or lotus stalks with buds or flowers in the capital. They could be a palm tree, conifer, or a stone version of a wooden tent pole. Like their Egyptian counterparts, early Greek and Roman temples, and the Etruscans for that matter, were built in a more rustic style. They began as small, one-room structures set on platforms, and were literal houses for the gods, just as in the case of Egypt. They had wooden frames, with mud, brick, or terracotta elements. That will be important to remember, as the elements of the entablature above the pillars on later classical temples appear to be purely decorative, but they're based on elements that would have had a utility in a wooden construction. This image depicts the three orders, or styles of architecture that developed in Greece and were then adopted in Italy as well. These are Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian columns, going from left to right. The first three are Doric columns. They're thick and squat, taper as they go up, and have very simple capitals. Additionally, note the large triglyphs that decorate the entablature above the columns. In the original wooden constructions, those would have been the ends of wooden crossbeams, so it's an element of a practical wooden design, frozen in stone. Doric temples tend to be low, plain, and almost brutish. This order is associated with masculinity, strength, and would be appropriate for a temple of Ares, Zeus, or Poseidon. One example of a Doric temple is the Temple of Apollo at Corinth. Moving on, the middle three columns are Ionic. They have little spiral elements on their capitals called volutes, and decorative bases. They're tall, slender, and more elegant. They also have small, tooth-like elements along the top called dentals. Associated with matronly femininity, the Ionic order would be appropriate for a temple of Hera, or maybe Demeter. One example is the temple of Athena Nike from the Acropolis in Athens. Finally, the last order is shown in the two columns on the far right. Those are Corinthian-style columns. Highly decorative, slender, and elegant, they have capitals carved to resemble elaborate plant leaves and blossoms. The Corinthian style would be most appropriate for a temple of a very feminine deity, like Aphrodite. That being said, exceptions to these rules on gender could be made, and elements could be mixed. It would not have been unheard of, for example, to build a temple to Zeus in the Corinthian style. Here's an example of a Corinthian temple to the Emperor Augustus. There are two more orders for you to learn for a total of five classical orders. These are the Roman ones, the Tuscan and Composite orders. Tuscan temples were developed in the Archaic period in Italy and were used by the Romans, the Etruscans, and by other Italic peoples. The best example of a Tuscan temple I can think of is the Temple of Jupiter Optimus Maximus in Rome. At the time of its construction in 509 BC, it was the largest temple in the Western Mediterranean. Composite temples look like a fusion of Corinthian and Ionic ones, hence the name. Take a look at this column. 
See the fancy acanthus leaves of the capital? It also has those spiral bits called volutes that are normally associated with Ionic temples. It's a composite of Ionic and Corinthian styles. Writing from the early Renaissance in 1485, Leon Battista Alberti wrote, quote, For this order, to the richness of the Corinthian, has added the delicacy of the Ionic. End quote. The floor plan and number of columns along the front of a temple also determines the way it's classified by archaeologists. Let's take a look at another image. The gist of it is that the outside of the temple is either ringed by columns, by walls, or by walls with decorative false columns. Depending on how much of the perimeter is column or wall, the temple is categorized differently. For example, if there are pillars running the whole way around the perimeter of the temple, it's called a peripteral temple. Finally, the number of columns along the front determines the style of temple. It could be a tetra-style temple, meaning it is four columns wide. It could also be a hexa-style temple, six wide, or an octa-style temple, eight wide. That part is pretty easy. Now let's combine everything we've discussed. A small Ionic temple with four columns on the front and no columns wrapping around the sides or back would be called a tetra-style Ionic pro-style temple. Take a look at this image of the Parthenon. Can you figure out how to describe it? Pause the video if you need to. Okay, the Parthenon is an octastyle, Doric, peripteral temple. It has eight columns on the front. It's built in the Doric order, and it has columns running the entire way around the temple. These architectural orders have spread far beyond the shores of the Mediterranean. They can be seen on modern government buildings, museums, and religious centers around the world, and their influence will continue long after we are all gone. These stone houses of the gods have become not just influential, but eternal, just as the first stonemasons intended them to be.